in this tutorial, I will show you how to read and understand Google Analytics data and I will show you how to register with Google Analytics and how you can integrate it with your website. This process takes about three minutes and I really want to share with you the most popular Google Analytics plugin for your website. And at the end of the tutorial, I will show you how to drive more traffic to your website. And in the comment section of this video, there are timestamps so that you can click and skip to specific parts of this tutorial. So let's dive right in. To access Google Analytics, you need to have a Google account or a Gmail email address. If you don't have one, to create one is really easy. You need to go to google.com and then here on the top right hand side, click on sign in. And here it will give you the option to create an account. This is for myself. And then all you need to do is complete your personal information and create your Google account like that. So this is if you don't have a Gmail email address. Once you have created a Gmail email address, the next step is to go to Google Analytics. So type analytics.google.com into the URL section and then click enter. So you need to be logged into your Google account to access Google Analytics. And then this is how you can set up a free account. So click on set up for free. So I'm going to call this account Natura Vita. Leave all of these checked. Click on next. Here it asks you what you want to measure. So we want to measure our website data. So leave that selected. Then scroll down and click on next. So here we need to add our website name. For that, I'm putting Natura Vita. Then your website URL. So I've put that here, www.naturavita.net. For industry category, I'm putting business and industrial markets. For reporting time zones, I'm selecting UK. For time zone, I'm going to select United Kingdom and then click on create. So I'm going to change this to United Kingdom. Then accept Google's terms and conditions. Scroll down, accept again, and I accept. All right, so this is how easy it is to create a Google Analytics account. So your tracking ID is what connects your website with your Google Analytics account. If you already have a tracking ID, but you want to create another one, it's very easy to do. Let me show you how to do that very quickly. You go here to admin and then click on create account. So it's the same process that we've just completed. So you do it again and then you can create another tracking ID. So the next step is to connect our Google Analytics account with our website. To do that, I'm going to go to my website, naturavita.net. So this is the back end of my website, so the dashboard area. I'm going to go to the left hand side here, hover over plugins and then click on add new. In the search area, type Google Analytics dashboard. So this is the plugin that we're going to install. It's by Monster Insights and it has over two plus million active installations. It is lightweight and incredibly effective. So what you want to do is click on install now and then click on activate. Then click on launch the wizard and it will take you step by step through the process of connecting your website with the Monster Insights. In this part of the installation process, you need to choose the account and tracking code you just created in step one. So now that you have linked your website to Google Analytics, you can view your data by clicking on your dashboard and you can view the stats here. If you newly install the plugin, it will take a few hours for that to populate. And if you want to see more stats, you can click on go to the analytics dashboard here or you can go to your Google Analytics account. So let's do that now and have a look at more statistics. So where you're going to land on initially when you come to your Google Analytics account is the home area. You can switch between accounts by going up here to all website data. If you click on it, you can switch between all of your accounts and also you can choose the website that you want to analyze further. So what you're going to see when you are at the home area is an overview of all of your statistics. So up here, you can see how many users are visiting your site. I'll talk about all of these in just a second. Also, I've got one active user on my site right now, and they're visiting the recipe section of my website. So that's quite handy to find out right away. And let's just keep an eye on this because that can change any time. By the way, tracking is disabled for administrators just to keep stats accurate if you're using Monster Insights, so be aware of that. So if we head back to the home area, you can see that it is tracking the last seven days. 
but we can change that to the last 28 days, 90 days, or even yesterday. Also, you can see now that the user is visiting the shop area of my website. So very useful information. Also, if we scroll down a bit, you can see how we acquire our users. So is it socially? Is it through referrals or organic search? So this is where you can get this information right there. Also here, you can see where users are coming from, uh, what devices they're using. So is it desktop, mobile or tablets? Also what pages they're visiting on your website. So this gives you a nice overview for your website data in the selected time period. But the stats that we really want to get our hands on are on the left hand side here. So on the reports, the three most important bits are audience, acquisition and behavior. Audience refers to who and how many people are visiting your site. Acquisition is how they're getting to your site and behavior is what they're doing on your site. If you're interested in conversions, this report will allow you to track specific actions that your users are taking on your website. So for example, filling out a sign up form, making a phone call. This is very useful because ultimately we want people to not only visit our website, but also, for example, to sign up to our newsletter or to get in touch with us. And this is where you will be able to see the results. Now for this to work, you need to set up some goals. If you want to know how to do this, then I will link a more detailed tutorial down below about Google Analytics and how to set up goals. On the reports, there's also real time, which gives you data about what's happening right now. So if you click on real time and overview, we can see how many people are active on our site right now. So you can see there's one user on my site visiting through a mobile device. You can see the pages that they're visiting and also where they're located as well. So they are located in Nairobi, Kenya. But like I said, the bread and butter is audience acquisition and behavior. So let's look at that in more detail now. So I'm going to click on audience and overview. So you can adjust the date range on the top right hand corner here by clicking on the arrow pointing down and then select the dates that you want to overview. Also, you can select a whole month by clicking up here. And also you can type a specific date in here. So I want to overview, for example, a one year period. Today is the 28th of January, 2020. And then click on apply. You can also customize the graph view by hours, days, week, or month. I'm going to leave it on month to make the graph easier to read. And if you hover over the graph, you can see a total number of users per month. So for example, for the 1st of March, 2019 to the 31st, I had 839 users. Okay, so let's have a look at our data in more detail. So if I just scroll down a bit, so the first two indicators show you the number of new and returning visitors to your site during the set period of time that you have selected above. So the first indicator shows you the total number of users and the second indicator shows you the number of new users from the total number of users. You can also see the split in the pie chart on the right. So for example, you can see that the total number of users who have visited my site for the selected period above is 7,654 and out of that 7,629 are new users. So the next indicator is sessions. So this means whatever a user does on a website, such as browsing pages, download resources, purchase products within a 30 minute time frame. So after 30 minutes, they will be added a new session. And if the user is inactive for 30 minutes, the session expires. If the user comes back after 30 minutes, a new session will be added to the total. So one user can create multiple sessions. This is also the number that you see here, which is the number of sessions per user. The next indicator is page views. Page views are the number of pages viewed on your site during the date range that you have selected. Page views is a good indicator of user engagement. The lower the number, the less engagement. The next indicator is the average number of pages visited for each session. More pages per session means that visitors are exploring more of your site. The average session duration is the length of time visitors tend to spend on your site. 
A low number means visitors don't spend a huge amount of time on your site, which means that they're not finding it very interesting. This number also tends to correlate strongly with the bounce rate. Bounce rate is the percentage of people who visit your site but left your site after only viewing one page. A high bounce rate is generally a sign that your visitors are not finding what they want and that's why they leave straight away. So now that we have covered some useful indicators, I want to show you something else that you can do with Google Analytics, which is really useful. So you can compare two time periods as well. So for example, the first date range is between this year, January, to last year, January. If I want to compare this period to 2018, I need to click on the arrow pointing down here, select compare to, then choose the date range that I want to compare, for example, the previous year, so 2018, and then I click apply. So I can see that the total number of users and new users have reduced by about 50%. So I need to make some serious improvements to my site. Bounce rate has improved a little bit and the average session duration as well. So I'm going to move on to Geo, which is another really useful metric by Google Analytics. So if I go here to the left hand side, we're still in audience. So I'm going to select Geo and location. So if I scroll down, this is going to show me where the majority of my traffic is coming from. So you can see that most of my traffic is coming from the United States, then India, and then we've got United Kingdom, Canada, and it sort of drills down from there. Also, you can see these useful indicators again, which we've covered already. Something that is also really cool is that you can hover over the countries and click into them as well. So for example, United States, if I click into it, I can see that the darkest states have the most traffic. So a lot of my traffic is coming from California, uh, some of it from Texas, Florida, and New York as well. So this is very useful information, especially if you are planning to do some kind of marketing campaign, then you can target specific people in the areas that you know where people are most interested in your content. So if I wanted to do a Facebook campaign, I could target people that are based in California, in Texas, in Florida. So you can see how powerful this is. All right, another useful metric I would like to show you is demographics. So I'm gonna click on demographics and overview. By the way, you need to enable demographics after you have created your Google Analytics account. So once you do, I can see here from the date that I have selected above that the age range of typical users on my site is mainly between the age of 25 and 34. Next, it's between 35 and 44. And then we have 18 to 24. And 63% of my traffic is male and about 36% is female. So that's again, very useful information for me when I'm creating content and also for marketing purposes. The last thing I want to show you on the audience is mobile. So if I click on mobile overview, and if I just scroll down here, you can see that the majority of my traffic is desktop followed closely by mobile and then tablet. So obviously I need to make sure that my website is mobile friendly. So if you're a small business, like a takeaway food shop, then you're probably going to have more mobile traffic. So you really want to make sure that you tweak the mobile design to be more important than desktop. So that's really good to know. By the way, you can also look at the devices even further by clicking on devices. I'm not going to go over it because of time. So now that we have explored who and how visitors interact with our website, let's look at how visitors are getting to our site. So I'm going to click on acquisition and overview. So we are still looking at a one year period. And if we have a look at the pie chart on the left, this breaks it down very nicely. So we can see here that about 38% of my traffic came from an organic source. If I scroll down and a whopping 79% only visited one page and bounced out of the site. Organic search means that visitors use a search engine like Google to find your website content. Then about 29% of users came from a social source let me click on the link social to find out more. So most of my traffic comes from YouTube, which is not surprising because I have a lot of direct links to my website from both of my YouTube channels. The next is Facebook. 
And actually what I could do is to create more Facebook ads to promote the content of my website there. I made a detailed and concise video about how to create Facebook ads in 2020. Okay, I'm just going to go back. Then you can also see that some of my traffic is coming from direct sources. Direct traffic means visitors that arrived on my site either by people typing my website URL naturavita.net into a browser or through browser bookmarks. And then we have a small number coming from referrals. And this just means that visitors come from direct links on other websites. So for example, other sites that like what you have to say or sell may post links recommending your site. So this is really the bread and butter about acquisition. The next tab that we want to explore is behavior. And this gives you data about what people are doing on your website. So what I'm going to do is click on behavior and then click on site content and all pages. So this will show you the top pages by number of views. So if you see this backslash right here, that means that's your home page. So you can see that I have over 2,900 views on my home page in the one year period that I've selected above. Then you can see that my book page is my next most popular page, which is not surprising because I have a lot of links for people to buy my ebook in quite a number of places. I can also scroll down here and select, for example, my top 50 most popular pages. So I can see that right here. And again, you have all of these useful indicators that you can use to analyze your pages further. Another thing I quickly want to show you is behavioral flow. If I click on behavioral flow, this is going to show you generally what people are doing when they land on your website. So for example, if I just hover over this area here, you can see that people are arriving at my homepage and then some of them are going to my shop, some of them to my book, then some of them to my about page. Uh, so you can really see the, the way that people are navigating my website from here, which is also very interesting. Now, the final thing that I would like to cover is just some tips about how to drive more traffic to your website. So tip number one is to send out regular email campaigns to your subscribers about content from your website. So for example, blog articles or special offers. So you can see here that whenever I write a new blog post like this one here, how to make 2020 ridiculously amazing, I send out a newsletter to my email audience and add links to my full blog article in the email. And that usually drives a lot of traffic to my website. Also, when people hit the like button on the article, that is a share on their Facebook, which generates even more traffic. Also, if you find your best pages and then create more of the same ones, you can also generate a lot of traffic to your website. Let me just quickly show you how that's done. So if I go back to my Google Analytics, then click on site content and select all pages. So at the moment, this will show us the top pages by number of views. To find out what pages our visitors find most interesting, Click on the comparison option at the bottom right hand side here. And then from the drop down, select average time on page. The pages with the longest bar are the pages users spend the most time on. Again, this is really valuable information because I can create similar content about the subject and that should also generate more traffic. All right, guys, I've covered quite a lot in this short tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also like and share if you found it valuable. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.